So recently there was a Mars rover landing and NASA streamed the whole thing. It was a very interesting watch so if you haven't seen the video I suggest doing so. Although the fact that it isn't live may take the excitement out of it. It was funny because I actually didn't even know about it until literally the minute after the landing happened. So I just missed it, which is sad. But anyway, this is of course not the first time we landed a rover on Mars. In fact, this is our fifth one. Oh, Professor Stick, why is this one so special? Well, let me tell you why, young child. The rover itself is called Perseverance, but it was not the only machine sent to the red planet. With it came Ingenuity, a small helicopter-like robot that will perform an experiment we've never done before. I'll talk about that a little more later. Anyway, as usual, whenever something like this happens, to the world it's an achievement, an advancement of mankind. To the flat earthers, however, let's just say they're not too happy. Every corner of the internet, you're bound to find some flat earther go crazy over this. I eat this kind of stuff for breakfast. Alright, let's take a look at one of those videos. They doing it again. You seriously gonna do this again, NASA? You guys, you guys can't keep saying that you're putting robot little remote control cars on Mars. They're doing it again. They're gonna put another robot remote control car on Mars. Have we not seen this before? <laughs> Listen to him, he's so mad. You know, every time we go to Mars, it's a new objective. It's not that every time we go back, it's to do the same thing over and over again. Of course not. What would be the point of that? The last one, Curiosity, had the purpose of exploring the climate and geology. This time, Perseverance has landed on a different area of Mars, specifically the crater Jezero. I hope I said that right. But yeah, this crater is suspected to have once held water, and you know what that means. If there's water, then there's a chance life was there at some point in time. If we can find some sort of evidence that life was there, that would change a lot on our perspective on life outside of Earth. I hope they do. Can you imagine the outrage from creationists? It'll make for some fantastic YouTube content. Anyway, that's one of the objectives of Perseverance. Eight years after Curiosity, we finally made it back to Mars. I can't wait to hear about what we discover on our neighboring planet. But for now, the tears of Flat Earthers will keep me entertained. Is this not getting old? Here we have the freshly cut faces of the NASA employees, the 20-somethings. A crew of, of experts, of course. The best of the best. Look at these guys. Clearly, they've been around for many years. This is the best of the best. This is what NASA has to offer. The leading space exploration um, team in the world. This is the best. Yeah, you may want to go take a nap to cool yourself down. In case you didn't know, there are many, many more scientists who worked on this project. These are just some of them that work specifically on the landing. All of the people who worked on this project are absolutely amazing and it's great to see the fruit of their efforts come to light. Feel free to insult these people after you've accomplished something that is even a fraction of what these scientists have done. Neither you nor I can ever come close to such an achievement. And here they are, socially distanced in a room, double masking. It's good news. Good news, don't want anyone getting sick and dying of the boogeyman disease at the world's most leading famous space agency. Sometimes I forget that flat earthers are also conspiracy theorists and many other things too. So of course Jake here would also be someone who doesn't believe in this pandemic that has killed 500,000 people in the US so far. As for double masking, I know some experts have recommended them and logically it makes sense, but personally I would like some sort of study to show that double masking is better. Anyway, it doesn't hurt to wear two masks, so why not? Just make sure you wash or exchange your mask for new ones instead of wearing the same ones over and over again. I'm now going to skip a little bit because he spends a lot of time passively aggressively insulting these scientists. And and I think we've all gotten the idea by now. He's triggered. And we're waiting to hear word of when this thing is going to land on Mars so that we can all jump up out of our seats and start clapping and acting as if we're so happy. The most difficult part of the trip is actually the landing of the rover. After you enter Mars's atmosphere, there's a lot to consider. First, you're going at like 20,000 kilometers per hour, which you would have to slow down to zero without completely crashing in less than 10 minutes. Then, due to the atmosphere, Mars, even though it's quite thin, can pack quite a punch. The rover will experience temperatures over 1,500 degrees Celsius. So, of course, many things could go wrong. Scientists coined this moment as the 7 minutes of terror. Hmm, that sounds like a good video title clickbait. So it's no wonder that all the scientists would be sitting there in anticipation on what is going to happen. All your work in the last couple of years could easily disappear in just 7 minutes of time. Can you imagine that? Yeah, well you don't actually get to see it land on Mars. You just get to hear a lady tell you it lands on Mars while staring at a CGI graphic on the screen. And then you jump up and start clapping as if your team just won the Super Bowl.
I don't know about you, but I think this is way more exciting than the Super Bowl. Anyway, how could you ever see the landing? What, do you expect them to send a second rover that holds a camera specifically just to get footage of the first rover landing? Please, get your garbage out of here. Not even the scientists themselves can see a footage of the rover landing. Instead, they depend on data and numbers to tell them information on the rover's condition. Don't be greedy now. But anyway, guys, here we go again. Let's get to the countdown. Let's make this magical moment happen. Here we go. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. I could watch that clip over and over again and not get tired of it. There's nothing like the feeling that all your hard work has paid off. I'm a little disappointed. They start off by social distancing, but then once touchdown happens, then they get up and start fist bumping. Totally disappointed in you guys. You guys are transferring boogeyman disease from your knuckles to your, your co-workers knuckles. I don't like it. They're not hugging and they're still respecting each other's space. A few fist bumps seems perfectly appropriate for a celebration on this scale. Seems like you will never really understand since you probably have never accomplished anything in your life. <laughs> it's okay, being smart is not for everyone. So anyway, just wanted to point out it's uh, 2021 now and uh, we are now landing a another robot car on Mars. And let's go ahead and look at the proof. Because of course there's proof that they've landed a robot car on Mars. Let's check the proof. There you have it, some dirt. You got a picture of the sand, they landed on the sand. There's no way you can take a picture of dirt and sand anywhere else except for on Mars. The rover came with 19 cameras, so that's what we're seeing right now. You flat earthers are always just dismissing photos and videos of Earth or space, so I don't expect it to be any different this time around. But anyway, nice straw man. No one is using that footage and saying that as evidence. In fact, this stream was never meant to convince you or anyone watching that space exists and Mars is another planet 55 million kilometers away. This is just something that NASA is doing and they decided to livestream it for the enjoyment of commoners like us. After all, it's nice they're being transparent about the things they do. Thank you very much, NASA. Please take my money. Please continue to take my money uh, forever until the end of time. Nobody needs the money more than you guys. We should honestly be increasing NASA's budget in my opinion. We have way too much stupid stuff we're throwing money at that honestly doesn't need that much. Anyway, I'm going to let this flat earther finish off his empty final thoughts. Then we'll actually talk about some cool stuff about perseverance and what kind of experiments it will be conducting. And of course, when you guys do prove that life does indeed exist on Mars or did exist on Mars, then we can go ahead and get to the bottom of this aliens uh, existing dilemma, which of course, obviously they do because NASA's there. They're going to prove it. It's awesome. Go NASA, USA. God bless America, Joe Biden is awesome. Okay, so yes, one of the main things we're going to try to find out is if life existed on Mars at one point. The rock evidence suggests that water was present at least at some point in Mars history, so we went to one of those craters to see if we could find anything. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean we will find anything, but it's still worth investigating. Can you imagine what would happen if we did find some good evidence though? Our perspective of the universe would change drastically. We would technically no longer be alone in the universe, and if we found signs of life that way, that could gateway us into finding life elsewhere in the solar system as well. But yeah, as you know, this isn't the only objective of Perseverance. One other major experiment that they're testing is with the Ingenuity helicopter drone robot. Ultimately, we have already achieved flight on Earth, but what about flight on Mars? A team of scientists at NASA has been building and experimenting this helicopter in simulated environments on Earth. Basically, you have to consider the gravity and the thin atmosphere. The atmosphere is one of the trickiest aspects of this because there is very little grip that the blades could take advantage of to propel itself upwards. Anyway, the scientists will now be testing that mini helicopter. By the time this video releases, they would have already made significant progress. Hopefully it is successful and that would be the first flight achieved on a planet other than Earth. Now you're probably thinking, why do we need to fly on Mars? Well, one thing to think about when exploring Mars is scouting. If we can have a drone fly in the air, it would be significantly easier to pinpoint targets of interest. We can also do things like map out the surface of Mars. Can you imagine that? Mapping out Mars? Because right now, our vision on the surface of the red planet can be pretty limiting, so achieving flight would be a huge progress in terms of the things we can explore and discover.
discovered. Honestly, I'm very excited for this because it could drastically improve our scope for future discoveries on this planet. Congratulations to all the scientists who have worked so diligently on this. Hopefully, we will get some more good news out of this, such as the habitability of the planet, which, by the way, the rover is testing in preparation of human astronauts. Anyway, hooray to science and hooray to space exploration. I recommend reading some Wikipedia articles for all the fascinating things that Perseverance will be doing. I guarantee you will enjoy the read. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.